Hi everyone, this is Adrian and Carrie. And today we are going to talk about Dolce and Gabbana the One Mysterious Night. Oh. Why is it Mysterious Night? Um, Dolce and Gabbana came out with a small line of flankers a few years ago to the one that are of a Middle Eastern sort of a flavor. They have more exotic scents that are often found in Middle Eastern uh, fragrances. Lots of oud, frankincense, uh, strong hints of rose, other spices and stuff that are in Middle Eastern scents a lot. I love roses. I'm gonna try this and I'm telling you, I like this, I like this. I haven't had a fragrance yet that really turned me off, but I'm gonna spray this on me. Okay. And my first impression is I feel like I'm smelling rubbing alcohol. And, 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 and it doesn't turn me off because I have a crush who used rubbing alcohol on himself. So it's like it, it's a positive uh, thing. But then when I smell it now, I smell like my bosses when I used to work 20 years ago you know, in the office. That's that's how they kind of smell, you know? And so I feel like if if I smell this, it's like, get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> what so, do you think about that? Why, why would you think it was popular with like um, that crowd, like boss figures? Well, were a lot of your bosses women? No, both. Um, well, while this is was created as a men's fragrance, I, I have thought of it ever since I first smelled it as a unisex fragrance. Um, what definitely puts me in mind of more unisex than strongly male is that this uh, Dolce & Gabbana The One Mysterious Night has a very central note of rose. Okay. I, I think of this as kind of a formal situation fragrance. Um, some things are real easy to pull off in a casual type of a setting. This to me always speaks of sort of sophistication, well-dressed, um, often situations that are a little more social yeah. and intermingling and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, 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 and it reminds and me, it, it does remind me of my bosses, they always dress nice. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, somebody can be called into a social. There's always office socials. And yeah, it's it's sophisticated. Rose is always pleasant, although mm -hmm. I kind of smell the oud more than the rose. And that's why, um, you know, as much as I love, uh, I, I like this fragrance. I like uh, fragrances that have more rose to them, mm -hmm. you know, than oud. Now, one of the things that I noticed with this one is that there is definitely oud there, but for people who are just getting into oud, this would be a fairly safe fragrance because the oud is not overpowering. Mm -hmm. um, it combined with the rose, it softens some of the animalic sort of hints mm -hmm. of the oud. You yeah, don't but notice I, I the like the oud. smell. I like the oud because it's like the sophistication, you know? And of course, you know, we like to smell human. I mean, I don't want to smell someone, clearly a person, and then think like, well, I'm smelling a veggie. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm not... I, I want to smell like, yeah, person. Like, because animal scents can be pleasant. I mean, that's pheromones, right? Mm -hmm. Pheromones. There yeah. we go. And often uh, scents like these are trying to pull off something like that with the intermingling of certain notes or uh, the kind of layering of different notes and stuff. They're trying to convey some sort of either sense of uh, sophistication. Uh, How about domination? Power, maybe? Power. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Money I kind of think of like power with, with this, uh, you know, a fragrance, mm -hmm. you know? Men and women, it's unisex. Yeah. It's like I, I didn't distinguish like, you know, female bosses from my male bosses. I mean, yeah. you know, so they carried this and they carried it well. Mm -hmm. so. One thing I feel about this one is this one, this scent is, if, if you're familiar with the Dolce & Gabbana, the one line and the Eau de Parfum or the Eau de Toilette, this one is, Similar in some notes, but this is not just something slightly different from those. This is very different. 
Um, I think they relied on their popularity of the Dolce & Gabbana, the one line, to bring these other Middle Eastern ones out. And these are kind of hard to come by in the U.S. market. Uh, it's getting a little bit easier, but when they first came out a couple years ago, they were hard to find because they really were marketed mostly to the Middle East. And then uh, as people over here started looking for them more through European and Asian channels and stuff, then they started shifting some of their distribution to over here. So you can find them now. They're just, you have to look a little hard for them. A little hard and we're, where would you start? Um, online fragrance places. Uh, sometimes if you look through um, Macy's and other uh, popular retailers or Sephora, then you can find these in there. They just aren't the ones that are going to be marketed to you on the front page oh, okay. of, of the websites. Okay. Well, hey, man, if you want to be a scent, scent aficionado, did I say it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, go for more of the exotic ones like these. Yeah, All right. Def definitely. Uh, this one is one that is probably not going to be your everyday scent, but when you walk into a kind of a formal or midway casual to formal sort of a setting with this on, people will notice you. This is not one that uh, smells as great, like right up close to the skin as it does where it that wafts off of you. Uh, but when it kind of, you get a breeze of it from somebody, it definitely smells uh, beautiful and sophisticated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I respected my bosses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks.